Hello everybody, so today I'm going to lead you through a sequence that works our hips, especially our outer hips. And the reason for this is because I know a lot of you are athletes, so our hips tend to get very, very tight. But also we have a tendency to hold a lot of emotions set in this part of our body. Um, so today, hopefully this will benefit you on not only a physical level, but also an emotional level as well. So before we begin, I like to use a cushion just to prop my hips up. It helps to tilt your pelvis forward, which can help when we're folding forwards in this seated position. So if you have one handy, that might be something useful to get right now. And then as we get started, you're just gonna close your eyes for a couple of moments. We're gonna take a big inhale through your nose. Lift your chest. And then as you exhale, I want you to open up your mouth. Side out. But as we exhale, imagine that you're fogging up a pair of sunglasses that you wear, and that's the kind of sound that we're making in the back of our throat. Our belly moves in towards our spine and activate our abdominal muscles. So getting ready for two more. Getting ready to inhale. And last one, maybe try to get a little bit more air into our body this time. reposition our legs. So as you can see my legs are, or my feet are closing to my hips right now but to really work the outer glutes and outer hips I'd like you to try and make a triangle with your legs so your knees are coming out from your hips and we're trying to create as much of a straight line here in front as we can. And as we inhale I'd like you to rise your hands up and look up. And then as we exhale, just gonna fold forward to wherever you can today. Wherever you feel that little bit of a stretch in the outside of your hips. Some of you might be able to come right down towards the ground, but the objective here is to keep your hips rounded on the floor. As you hold here, I want you to focus on that breath. And as we practice today, I'd like you to, as much as possible, stay in the present moment. And how we can do that is really focus on our inhale on our exhale. So as we breathe, try to breathe in for about four counts if you can. And exhale. And every time you exhale, you might be able to go a little bit deeper with this stretch. And as you breathe, really try to send your breath into the area of your body that you feel the stretch. As we breathe, we're breathing similar to what we did at the very start of the class. We're trying to breathe in and out through our nose, keeping our mouth closed, and activating and clenching the muscles in the back of our throat as we exhale, but also activating the muscles in our belly, so bringing that belly to your spine to eliminate the air out of your body. As you stay in this posture for a little bit longer, you might find that you're able to go a little bit deeper. On our next breath now, we're going to move over to the right side. So you're going to start to bring your hands over to your right side. And as you do, your left rib cage is going to start to flare up towards the ceiling. So what I want you to try to do is come into that little bit of a twist as you bring your rib cage down towards the floor. And just move here to wherever again you can with your body, just feeding that stretch into your body. Maybe allowing your forehead to come closer to the ground. So I'm going to take three breaths here. So inhaling for one, and exhale. Inhaling for two, and exhale. And inhaling for three, and exhale. Now taking that right hand, Placing your right hand out from your hip, placing the palm of your hand down. And then you're gonna drop your shoulder again to wherever you feel a stretch here on the left side. And then extend your left hand up. You should be feeling a stretch here in the left side body. You might even be able to come down onto your elbow. Just walk your hand out to wherever you can to get that stretch and keep grinding at that left hip down. And again, working with your breath here. So you're fine, you'll find the more that you can 
focus on your breath, the deeper you're able to go with the stretches, but also easier it is to eliminate all the thoughts from your mind as you just focus on the movement of the air coming out of your body. In your ne next breath or last breath, you might be able to create a diagonal line, so moving our left hand further towards our right leg, deepening that stretch. Now that an inhale back to center. We're going to swap over our legs now. So you're going to change the position of your legs. So that for me, my right foot is in front of my left now. I'm going to inhale all the way up again. Staying here, and again, just working with that breath, sending it into the inside of the side of our, our hips, so I feel a deep stretch here. And again, just stay up as high as you need to. You could be right here, and that's perfectly fine. It doesn't really matter about the position of your body, but what you want to feel is just a little bit of a stretch. And as we move through each one of the postures today, just try to be mindful of what your body is feeling. And obviously, if anything is feeling pain, just come out of the posture. You want to start to recognize the difference between a stretching sensation and a painful sensation. So we have our next breath, we're going to walk our hands over to the left side. And again, trying to twist our ribcage down here so that our chest is parallel towards the floor. And for me, my right side here, back of my back is definitely tighter. So I can feel this a lot more than my left. I can feel it right into the center of my hip as well. Just into that glute medius. Taking our last inhale and exhale. Taking our left hand away from our body now, dropping our shoulder down, grinding our right hip down, and extending our right hand up just in that stretch. And again, just going here, wherever you feel the stretch along the right side. your right hand over more towards the left side to deepen that stretch but what you want to avoid is bringing the shoulder down you want to try to stack the shoulder one on top of the other really deepen that stretch and then next thing you have to back to the center just resetting your spine now into a neutral position. Just gonna do one more movement. So when we get up every day, we should try to move our spine in all the different directions that it can move. So that's lateral, side to side, forward, backwards, and also a twist. So this guide you through some forward and backward motions for our spine. So bring our hands onto the front of our knees. And as you inhale, you're gonna bring your chest forward. You're gonna bring your tailbone back. Use your hands to pull against your knees and look up towards the leg. As we exhale, relax our body back to a neutral spine and then squeeze our abdominals, arch your back, bring your chin to your chest and tuck your tailbone. One more time, inhale. And exhale, let everything go this side, open your mouth. We're going to start at the top of the mat. So you want to have your feet hip distance apart. 
And as we stand here, this posture is known as Tadasana, or mountain pose. And start to feel the, the ground underneath your feet. Start to activate through the muscles in your legs. Lift your kneecaps up. Start to squeeze your glutes. Tuck your tailbone slightly down to engage the abdominals here. I want you to focus on rolling your shoulders back and down. And then placing the palms of your hands straight ahead. Then try to line up your head on top of your shoulders. Your shoulders on top of your hips and your hips over your ankles. And just close your eyes. And just feel that breath again. In our next inhale, we're gonna take our hands up over our head. You're gonna to look towards your tongues. And then as you exhale, you're gonna fold forward, sending your hands behind you, coming into this squat position. Then taking your hands behind your back, lowering your head down towards the ground and your fists up towards the ceiling. And you'll start to feel a stretch here in the back of your hamstrings, into the back of your glutes, but also into your shoulders. And as you stay here, you can start to rock your hips side to side, straightening and bending your right and left knee, lifting your right and hip, right and left hip up towards the ceiling. And then on your next exhale, start to grind down through your ankles, release your hands. Place your hands forward onto your shins and look up to this half lift position. And then as you exhale, you're going to step back, step your right foot back first, followed by your left foot and find this plank position. From here as you inhale, rock forward. As you exhale, lower your elbows down to this chaturanga. And then as you inhale, coming up to upward dog, Hips, knees off the ground, looking forward. And as you exhale, come on up to down dog. So this is your first down dog, so it might be really nice to bend your knees in towards your belly. Try to send your hips up high. Try to push your shoulders back and look towards your knees. And then once you've found this position, you can start to straighten and bend your right and left knee. And again, just slowing down your breath. You can come up high onto your toes and then release your heels down towards the mat. And then once you have found a nice position for your down dog, you can Press your left foot into the floor. And then on your next inhale, you're gonna lift your right foot up towards the ceiling. You're gonna bend the knee, and then try to lift the knee so that you stack your right hip over your left hip. Try to find the camera there. And then as you exhale, you're gonna come forward. Bring your knee towards your elbow. Try to touch your knee off your elbow if you can. And then you're going to Ground that right foot down on the ground. As you find the outside of your mat, you want your toes pointing outwards. And then we're going to drop the left knee down. So really opening up the groin here and stretching into the inside of the hip and also into the outside here. And then I'd like you to place your body weight onto both hands first of all, then more onto the left hand and place the right hand onto the inside of your knee. Once you have the right hand onto the inside of the knee, as you inhale, bring your shoulder back up towards the ceiling, and look up to the ceiling. And then just breathe. You can take small movements here if it feels good, just rocking your hips side to side. Again, just be really careful with your body. Try not to you know, go too deep. This may be the first time that you're ever doing this stretch. So even having a buck or something underneath your hand here for a little bit of extra support might be better for you. Now we're gonna walk that right foot into the center. You're gonna tuck the left toes under. 
You're gonna lift the knee off the ground, the left knee off the ground. And then as you inhale, you're gonna reach your hands forward and then coming right up. We're finding this high lunge position, our crescent pose. Just holding this posture here, try to squeeze the glutes. Try to bring that front knee down. Bending as much as you can. Objective is to try to get it as close to parallel against the mat as you can. You want to feel a stretch here into your hip flexor on the left side. And then as you inhale, come forward. As you exhale, drop the left hand down to the inside of the foot. And you're going to find a twist. Looking up to your right hand. So inhale and exhale. And inhale and exhale. And inhale and exhale. Bringing your right hand down, you're going to turn the left foot to parallel to the back of the mat, so at a right angle. We're going to find reverse warrior. So bringing your hands up and then turning the palm of the hand to face your face and then reaching over your head. You're gonna feel a stretch all the way along the right side of your body here. Just keep the bend in the front knee if you can. Try to squeeze up through your pelvis, so engaging the muscles of the pelvic floor here. This is known as our Mula Bandha Yoga. And it's really, really important posture when we try to find strength in our postures. And as you inhale, come forward. As you exhale, bring the right hand over. We're finding side angle position. Feeling a stretch here along the right side of the body. You might be able to drop, sorry, it's the left side of the body. You might be able to drop the right hand down. And using our strength here to keep us in this posture as we stretch. And then coming forward again, twisting on that back foot. You're going to drop the knee down. You're going to point the toe behind you. You're going to just move your hips as low as you can. You're going to feel the stretch here in the hip flexor. But again, just go to wherever you feel that little stretch, don't overdo it. And then as you inhale, reach forward and up, finding this back bend, deepening that stretch. And breathing. So every time you inhale, try to lift your chest up. down to either side of your foot. You're going to tuck your left toes under, lift the knee, step back and up. Open up the hip again and drop the right foot down. Come into that down dog again, stretching out the legs, especially that right leg, getting the blood flowing again from top to bottom. And finishing off on this side with our pigeon pose. So you're going to bend that right knee again. Bringing your right knee towards your right elbow, your right hand. Dropping the right knee down. If you can, you're trying to press the right hip down towards the ground. Just take a couple of moments here to fiddle around with your hip. So what you're trying to do is avoid leaning too much on this right side, but balancing out our hips to keep them parallel to the floor. You might need to prop a little buck or cushion underneath that right hip to help you to balance here, to help you to um, even at your hips. If it feels good here, you can come down onto your elbows. And hold.
Okay, so from this pigeon pose on the right side, you're gonna press through your hands, you're gonna tuck the left toes under, we're gonna step back to that downward dog position. Now gonna push your body forward into plank. Start to bend your elbows into chaturanga. And inhale to upward dog. And exhale to down dog. And moving into the left side now. I'd like you to extend your left foot up. Start to bend the knee, stack the hips. And just work on opening up this hip here on the left side. So you can start to bring your hip out, and then bring your knee in. Maybe touching your knee off your forehead. And then out one more time. And this time as you come forward, bring your knee towards your elbow and step your left foot out. We're dropping your right knee down onto the mat. And then pressing down to our right hand. Pressing our left hand away onto the inside of the left knee. And again, we're turning that left shoulder so that it faces up towards the ceiling. And really working into this glute here on the left side. Just breathe in. So again, every time you inhale, try to push your chest forward up towards the ceiling. And every time you exhale, try to send the breath down into the hip. Truly really release the tension here. And again, you can start to rock the hip side to side. Just really bringing some more mobility into the left side. And then you're gonna to turn to face the top of the mat. Start to walk your left foot towards the center. You're gonna tuck your right toes under. Lift the right knee back and come into this high lunge position with crescent pose on the left side. And again, inhaling to lift the chest and lift the fingertips high to the ceiling. And exhale, squeeze through the pelvic floor, squeeze through the abdominals. Now as you exhale, you're going to turn that back foot. You're going to rock your hands forward, placing the hand onto the inside of the foot and extending up into this side angle position. You're going to be feeling a stretch here along the right side of your body now. So try to push your hips back, try to push your shoulder back, or just squeeze your shoulder blades together in the back of the body. And then if you can, look up towards your fingertips, whatever, if you've got any tension in your neck, it's totally okay to look forward as well. And then on your next inhale, sending that right hand back, left hand up to the ceiling, finding reverse warrior. Getting the stretch into the hip here on the left side, into the left side body. Try not to dump your body weight onto this hand, but let it be free. And find the strength in your body through your hips, so really pulling up through the pelvic floor. Try to suck up and suck in your abdominals. And then coming into side angle again, so bringing your elbow onto the inside of your knee, or your hip actually, sorry, don't lean on your knee, but up, up here. And then bending down as much as you can, sending your hand over your ear, and just in that stretch here along the right side. and actively trying to avoid the shoulder coming down, turning it high up to the ceiling. And then as you inhale, let's windmill our hands down towards the ground, placing your hands 
onto the floor and stepping back to down dog. Sending our left foot up to the ceiling, facing our knee forward, finding that low lunge position on the opposite side. We reach it up with our hands. Feeling that extension in our spine. So rather than crunching here in your lower back, you want to lift and extend. So try to imagine you're trying to create space between each vertebrae in your spine. So try to lift and extend up to the ceiling. It can help to look up to the ceiling to really lift that chest forward. As we exhale, reach your hands forward, place our hands down. Step back to our hip opener and our down dog. Climbing forward to pigeon on this side. So balancing out our right and our left side is so important. But if you do feel tighter on one side, it can be helpful to pause the video and spend a little bit more time in whichever posture you feel that you need. But for example, for me, my left glute is definitely tighter, so if I can at all, I spend more time on this side. Also, you can play around with this posture, so you can practice coming up, standing up, and then you can see Really what feels good, you can step high onto your fingers, you can come down onto your elbows, reach your hand down and come onto your forehead. Whenever you're ready to come out of this posture, you can lift yourself back up, coming onto your fingertips, tucking your right toes under, lifting your knee, and pressing your body back up into this down dog position. You're not going to step your feet together, touch your toes. You're going to bend your knees in towards your chest, and we're going to try to jump forward and step our feet out to the outside of the mat. So I'm going to turn now so that I can see you guys. But from here, what you want to try to do is hook your elbows onto the inside of your knees. And then find this, what's known as yoga as malasana. It's a deep squat position. So obviously this can be quite a difficult posture and you may not be able to get yourself right down here. But just go to wherever you can. So even staying here, even placing a, a block or a cushion or something underneath your hips to support you will help you stay longer in the posture and will also work on stretching the inside of your groin here, the inside of your hips. If you are in this position, what you want to try to do is actively push your chest forward and lengthen through your spine and the back of your body. And again, with this posture, stay as long as you need, as, as long as you like. And this can be a posture that you can do every single day because it's a really, really good hip opener. Once you're ready, you can rock back onto your hips. We're gonna turn. We're gonna extend up into this boat pose. And as we slowly allow our body to come down towards the ground, we're gonna challenge our abdominals. So. As you straighten your legs, try to look towards your toes. Maybe press your lower back into the ground. And then lower your hands and your feet onto the floor. And find Shavasana position. My favorite pose. 